coming right there. Oh, hey, gents, welcome back to Tactical Rifleman. You know we're all about uh, covering what the military does, shoot, move, communicate, but we also like to cover uh, driving, medical, breaching, a little bit of everything. Uh, well, I want to go back to some of the most important things, and that is basic trauma management. All right, so all the pew-pew guys that want to go to the range, you still need to have the basics for treating medical injuries, because sometimes accidents do happen. For our gunfighters, uh, accidents happen more often. When you're in a two-way gunfight, it is literally a two-way gunfight. People get hit. So you, our military trains a lot on what we call TCCC, Tactical Combat Casualty Care. Uh, basically, it starts with a primary survey, doing self-aid, and then buddy aid, uh, and then you know getting medical gears and other echelons of medical treatment from there on out. Uh, but what I want to talk about today is, again, just uh, that initial response. And I want to talk about setting up your gear. Now, uh, you can go back and you can watch a video on what I keep in my, my IFAC, my individual first aid kit that is on my gun belt. But I've had a lot of questions on it, so I want to touch on it a little bit more. Uh, now, I've, I've checked all the military regulations because, you know, I, I retired as a sergeant major. I know these regulations. I don't remember ever reading a regulation that said God will only have you get injured in your weak hand. Um, no, it's literally you can be injured with either arm. So not only do you need to be able to reach that tourniquet with your strong hand, you need to be able to reach it with your support hand. If you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, stand up and put your hand on your wallet. You're used to reaching your wallet in your back pocket. Now try getting to that wallet with your other hand. It's much harder to get to, isn't it? Yes, it is. And that's how you need to think about your medical gear. I set up uh, on my gun belt, a tourniquet that I can reach with either hand. I set up on the front of my body armor, a tourniquet that I can get to with either hand. I have two tourniquets that I can get to within arm's reach. Now, when you set up your tourniquet, they come wrapped in plastic. I hate guys showing, this is a Cat7 tourniquet. This is the one that I recommend you guys invest in. Don't get the cheap knockoff Chinese made copies from Amazon. Get the ones that are actually made by North American Rescue. Don't just get the ones that are rated for airsoft. Get ones that are rated for saving your life. Uh, but I hate when guys show up with them still wrapped in plastic. Right? As you're, uh, and you don't have to get the fancy uh, Kydex uh, specially made tourniquet pouches. I'm using an old flashbang pouch. Why? Because it works. I don't care. I just like things that I can close with Velcro. Your tourniquet, you need to be able to pull it out with one hand. Now, it comes folded nice and neat. A lot of people put it in their pouches the exact same way. I want to show you a trick. Right? Um, your tourniquet, I want it to be large enough, because uh, it is, it's long enough that you can run it around your leg, right? That, because, you know, you're going to use it on your extremities. But what I want you to do is, you, you notice it has a little red tab right there. All right, see the little red tab? And what that's for is so you can find the end so that if you had to go around the leg, you go around the leg and you tuck it through and then you pull it and you, you tense it down. Now, uh, however, if you had to set it up for use on your arm, that means one of your arms is incapacitated out of the fight. So you're not gonna be able to take your arm and run it through the loop. You're just, you're just not gonna be able to do that. So I want you to Think of it as though this arm is hanging down, and I want you to already have this thing pre-set up uh, so that you can use it best one-handed. And how you do that is you take your, take your tab, run it through the buckle, you're gonna run it up about that length, and then I want you to fold it back on itself and squeeze that Velcro shut. All that's holding it is just that little bit of red tab. Now you can still fold it down the same way you had it before. It's roughly the same size. But what this does is now when you pull it out of your pouch, okay, as soon as you pull it out, you're going to see you've got this handle on top. You can run it up over that arm, go as high as you can. But now when you grab that handle and pull it, see how it immediately is already, uh, it's already set up and it's already started literally 
pull it down, set the Velcro, and you're set. Now you just, you've got the windlass where you can reach it, you can start twisting it. All right, I'm gonna show you one more time, because this is important, all right? Again, it comes all folded nice and pretty, all right? That's for storage, that's fine. That's for a paramedic taking it out of his medical bag. But for you, take it out of the wrapper, got the side with the windlass, you're gonna run your red tab up through far enough that you can fold it over. And I just want just a little bit of uh, the red tab just below the buckle and then fold that, make it into a handle. Now, when you go to store this thing, you'll have it folded nice and pretty. It still goes into your same storage pouch the exact same way. It still fits, right? Nice and easy. Except now when you have to pull it out one-handed, as soon as you let go of this thing, my handle is, is my velcro handle is where my red tab is. When you go to do it, slide it so that the red tab is facing you. Go up the arm as high as possible. Grab your handle, pull it, it will release that velcro. You only had about a half inch of velcro, just enough to hold your handle in place. Cinch it down as much as you can. Tuck the Velcro up underneath. And guys, you're set. Now you can spin that windlass. How tight do you make that windlass? Tight enough so no more blood is squirting out. If you're not sure, I'll give you a hint. If, if your patient is conscious, which is you, by the way, because you're the one putting it on yourself, you're going to want to take this puppy off. You're not gonna want it on. It's gonna hurt and it's gonna hurt bad. It doesn't matter. It's not made for being comfortable. It's made for saving your life. Unhook it and give that puppy one more twist. Then you've got your little uh, tab, run it across. That's so while you're moving the patient, it doesn't accidentally have the windlass come undone. But you'll notice it also says time on it. That's so you can actually write down uh, the time that you put the tourniquet on. Is it that important if you're putting it on yourself? No. What's important is you get it onto the person and get it onto them as fast as possible. Best way to treat for shock, keep the red blood cells inside the body. How do you do that? You do that by stopping the bleeding, right? So uh, again, I just, I just want to give you guys a hint on how to fold that brand new tourniquet and then store it on your kit where you can reach it with either hand. I can reach that with either hand. Now, as far as your medical kit itself, you'll notice I, wear, I run mine on the back of my belt. Now, I don't run it to one side or the other. It is perfectly centered on my back so that I can reach it with either hand. So that no matter which hand gets injured, whether it's my strong hand or my weak hand, all I'm doing is I'm undoing the fast tech buckle and then that med pouch Velcro's off and I can pull it back around in front of me. All right, uh, two, uh, two zippers, it undoes and I lay it out. If you, if you wanna get in exactly what I keep in my kit, that's a whole separate video, right? Um, does everybody need what I carry in my kit? Do you need a 14 gauge needle for decompressing a chest in the case of a tension pneumothorax? If you don't know these signs and symptoms of a tension pneumothorax, you probably don't need to be carrying that, all right? Um, so what I put together, because everyone's like, Carl, hey, where can we buy this stuff? Where can we buy this stuff? And I, I put out a list of components but what ended up happening was I started having guys show up at classes with counterfeit stuff, stuff that they're buying that's Chinese made. It's made for airsoft guys to look cool. Uh, that's No, you need good gear. So when I think good medical gear, I think North American Rescue. They're the ones that make the uh, uh, Academy of TCCC training approved cat tourniquets. Uh, so if you're gonna buy tourniquets, buy the new Gen 7. It's got the gray, uh, the gray Velcro band on it. Buy that. Now, as far as actual individual components, what I did was, you guys don't need to carry all the stuff I carry, but I was also looking for a smaller kit that I could carry every day, carry in my vehicle, have it, uh, in my book bag, in my red bag of woe that I moved from vehicle to vehicle, for you guys to be able to carry in your briefcases. 
This is a TSA approved medical kit. Uh, it's from North American Rescue. Um, it's called EDC Everyday Carry Kit. I got the part number right here. It's in the comment section below the video. It has the Tactical Rifleman logo on it. I'm not doing this to advertise, right? Just you'll know you're getting the right one, right? Because they gave me my own part number, right? So, um, tip, uh, kit tears open. I say it tears open because it's vacuum sealed. The stuff is going to stay clean. Why that's important is I was inspecting the medical kits in my Jeep that I keep underneath each seat. And what I found was a lot of the stuff was moldy and crudded up. I thought about why? Well, because I ford rivers with my Jeep sometimes with the top and the doors off. I get rained on a lot and my stuff gets wet. Um, no big deal. I replace my stuff with new stuff. Uh, but for you to just toss in your bag, keep it vacuum sealed. Now, if you're going to put this stuff onto your actual kit, take it out of the plastic because the extra 10 seconds that you just saw me spend is 10 seconds that you could be used in treating the patient. So when you get inside of it, right off the bat, it's got a roll of 200 inches of duct tape. Why duct tape? If you've ever tried putting dressings, whether it's occlusive gauze over a gunshot wound or something like that, uh, you'll find a lot of time your medical tape doesn't stick. Okay, use duct tape, all right? Uh, you can use it for all kinds of stuff. Really, I have used duct tape in place of butterfly uh, bandages for actually closing larger uh, lacerations. All right, uh, first and foremost, right off the bat, it comes with, this is actually called the uh, North American Rescue MIDI Responder EDC. This is basically the same large, uh, we, we, in the military, we call them the Israeli dressings. Uh, it's, got the it's got the plastic windlass on it. Uh, it's got so much of the gauze, but then it has a big, huge, long tail on it. This still has the same gauze. It's called the mini because it's got a few feet less of the elastic band for wrapping around the patient. Here's why I went with the mini in the kit. One, it takes much less space, but also I have had to wrap this thing over and over and over and over again around so, a, a patient's extremity. I don't need the big long dressing all the time. A lot of times the extremities are much smaller and I just don't need it. So I, I chose the smaller dressing. This is the mini. I like vacuum packed Curlex. Right, the, the rolls of Curlex that you get at any pharmacy, this is the exact same roll of cor uh, Curlex, but look how small that thing is, vacuum packed. Now it opens up into a standard roll of Curlex. What do I use that for? This is what I'm packing in the wound first before I put the dressing. If I can see where that bleeder is, if I can reach my finger in there and actually feel that bleeder, I'm packing Curlex to the bone. I'm gonna pack that inside the wound. It also comes with a set of hyphen chest, of vented chest seals, two. So exit wound and entrance wound. So if you have a through and through gunshot wound, you've got good occlusive dressings that are vented that you can put on front and back. And then it's got a set of large rubber gloves, right? Rubber gloves, you're gonna protect yourself while you're treating the patient. So anyways, guys, it's simple. There's not a lot in here, but with my tourniquet on the front of my kit and this stuff that you have, it, again, it comes vacuum sealed. Uh, you don't have to reach out to me. I sell these things at our website, okay? If you want these, you can reach out to me. Uh, you can go through Instagram and private message me. The patrons buy them from me all the time on Patreon. I make these so I can uh, get them out to my students this is what I think at a minimum you guys should be carrying. It, however, you don't have to buy these from me. You can go straight to North American Rescue. The part number, again, it's listed below. And uh, anyways, you don't have to buy my kit. You, buy, you can build your own kit. Here's my simple ingredients right there. But uh, anyways, this is what you need. That's about all I want to mention for today, guys. But have medical gear. It's have the knowledge to use it, 
but uh, can you make a tourniquet out of sticks and rags? Yes, you can, but I'm here to tell you a, a good Cat7 tourniquet is gonna be so much faster to put on and having all the proper tools to treat that trauma patient uh, again, it's going to help you keep them alive, and that, that, keeps, uh, that keeps the names off the wall. Anyways, that's all I've got for today, gents. You know the deal. Leave the comments below, and uh, we'll see you all next time. New video every Friday. You all take care. Shoot straight. If you like this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter so you don't miss out on anything.